Good evening, everyone. Um, we'll get going in just about 30 seconds or so, just to leave uh, time for more people to gather, and uh, we'll take the session from there then. Okay, so uh, thank you all for being with us this evening. Uh, my name is P.O. Fenton and I'm head of the Department of Marketing and International Business at Munster Technological University. Over the course of the next while, you're gonna hear from various people from Munster Technological University and uh, Atlantic Flight Training Academy to talk to you about our BSE Honours in Global Business and Pilot Studies, which is a brand new program that we're re really excited about and which we hope you share our excitement in as well. Um, just a couple of housekeeping things as we begin. Um, if you have any questions, please use the Q&A function as we're going through the session uh, to ask your question. Um, we'll pick up some questions as we go through the presentation and we'll, we'll, we'll try our best to answer questions at the end of anything that remains as well. So please uh, feel free to, to ask anything that's on your mind. But we'll hope we can be as, as thorough as, as possible. So if you just allow me just to share my screen and I'll be ready to um, talk you through things then. Just bear with me for one moment as that happens. And yeah. Okay, can I just confirm there that that's visible? Great, thank you. Okay, so um, as I mentioned earlier, this is about our Bachelor of Science Honours in Global Business and Pilot Studies, a program developed by Munster Technological University and the Atlantic Flight Training Academy. And over the course of, of this evening, uh, you're going to meet various people from uh, MTU, as we call ourselves now, including Michelle McManus, who's a lecturer in the Department of Marketing and International Business, as well as Colin Crowley, who's a, a part-time lecturer with us here in the department and a senior first officer uh, with a large airline. Um, from the Atlantic Flight Training Academy, uh, we're going to be joined by Captain Mark Casey, who's the CEO and head of training, as well as Captain Kyle Johnston, who's the training and compliance manager, Captain Philip Smyde, who's the safety manager, and Sarah Godfrey, who's the sales and marketing manager. So over the course of the presentation, you'll hear from, from, from various of us as we uh, tell you a little bit more about this program. Conscious some of you may know something about uh, Munster Technological University and indeed about Atlantic Flight Training Academy, but we're going to tell you a little bit more about each place as we start. Uh, firstly, in terms of uh, MTU, it's a brand new university having received uh, a government uh, a delegation as a university in uh, January 1st, 2021. Previously, we would have been Cork Institute of Technology and Institute of Technology Tralee. Two institutions have joined together uh, to form Ireland's newest university. Uh, so we've got 18,000 uh, students um, in our uh, university, uh, 2,000 staff, and we're involved in a whole range of disciplines ranging from counselling and psychotherapy through to business, um, tourism, hospitality, science, engineering, and indeed uh, maritime uh, engineering and, and all that goes with that as well. So a very, very wide range of activity. Uh, with a very strong kind of history uh, as well. And there are six campuses. The one that's relevant to this program is the Bishopstown campus, which is the largest campus in Cork uh, from the university, where normally there would be about uh, 5,000 full-time students uh, on campus by day. Obviously, we're in slightly strange times at the moment, but that will change soon, hopefully. And we're involved in a wide range of, of research activity as well. So um, again, I suppose partly why we're, we're telling you um, about MTU is because even though it says a long tradition in the form of Cork Institute of Technology and IT Tralee, uh, you might not know it uh, by this precise name uh, just until now. So that's MTU. Um, and I, I guess just to give you some context of what we've been doing in the aviation space, this isn't um, our first initiative um, with respect to aviation in 2018. Um, myself and colleagues in my department working with the Atlantic Flight Training Academy developed an add-on program for people who are already trained as pilots. Many, as you know, will have been working for many years, mightn't have undertaken a college degree initially, 
but have wonderful experience behind them. And we wanted to develop a program that would allow them to actually develop their learning further. And at the moment, as a consequence of that program we developed, which is the BA Honours in International Business with Aviation Studies, we've now 170 pilots enrolled in MTU undertaking their program online while also uh, generally working. Um, so we've, we've been able to develop a network around the aviation sector. We understand pilots and, and how complex it is. And I guess that has helped us to develop this program. And, and we'll tell you more about how we've used that information to design that program in just a little while. I'm going to hand you over now to um, Philip Smythe, I think, um, to uh, join us for, uh, tell us a little bit more about Atlantic Flight Training Academy. You're, you're on mute there, Philip. <laughs> Now, how now? Loud and clear? Perfect, thank you. Fantastic. So thank, thanks, Pio. And uh, good evening to all of you. And uh, thanks for taking the time to tune in and see exactly what uh, all this new exciting degree programme has to offer. Uh, from our side of the fence, we obviously provide the, the technical part of the, the flying element of it and all that goes with it. It's not just um, a matter of learn to fly the airplane. It's also a lot about operating systems and there's a significant element of um, theory involved in it. Uh, just for a bit, little bit of background about our operation, we're Atlantic Flight Training Academy based at Cork Airport. We're on the go now for 25 years. So we're not uh, uh, somebody coming new into the business. It's something we've been involved in. And even before Atlantic, most of us have been involved in, in pilot training and commercial aviation to some extent as well too. Founded by Mark Casey, who's our uh, CEO and head of training as well too. On the go of 25 years, as we say, and our graduates, over 2,000 of which we've um, developed over the years, are flying with a range of airlines across Europe and globally. So um, at Cork Airport, is a, it's a great training location for us because, as you know, it's an international airport, which is great for us because it does a couple of things for us. First of all, it gives us an opportunity to get people to learn to fly in the environment of an international airport. So you're mixing and matching with other um, commercial traffic with Aer Lingus and Ryanair and uh, Air France and KLM and all the other operators that come in and out of Cork. So it's very important to have that. The facilities at Cork Airport in terms of training are second to none because as an international airport, it has the full range of instruments, navigation instruments that we're using. And uh, they're all up state of the art equipment as well too, which is terrific for us. And by the same token, our fleet is very much state of the art as well too. We have a very young fleet of aircraft. It's a mix of aircraft. For those of you who may be a little bit familiar with uh, small aircraft design and, and models and makes, uh, the, the range we have consists of, include Cessna 172s. That's the single uh, engine airplane four seater. And then the bigger aircraft we would have uh, on the fleet, the PA-34 Seneca, very old technology, but a superb airplane to learn to fly in because it's got a lot of systems that have to be well managed. And then graduating onto the Diamond DA-42 Twin Star. It's a very exotic name and uh, it's an exotic airplane. This slide gives a very good illustration of what these aircraft look like. We've got three of these in the fleet and they are state of the art. It's, um, it's a terrific platform to learn in because it's got a very similar interface uh, or cockpit layout that you'd find in, the, in an airliner as well too, in the sense that the instrumentation is all presented electronically. So it's identical to what you'd find on the, the flight deck of a, a modern airliner as well too. For every aircraft, multi-engine aircraft we have, multi-engine is the term used for an airplane that has more than two engines. We have a corresponding simulator. So these are known as the, the range of them is called FNPT2s and we have them for the Seneca and for the Diamond. The, 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 sen the simulators that have been developed nowadays are, are state of the art and they're very faithful replicas of the aircraft, which is great because you can do so much training in a simulator to simulate different events that you wouldn't do in the aircraft for the grounds of safety, simulating different uh, type of emergency scenarios. So they're great to have that. And on the integrated course, about 40 hours of the course is conducted or are conducted in the simulators as well too. So they're a vital piece of the training equipment. You'll see reference then to a Boeing 737 NG next generation simulator. So where that fits into the, the whole package is that when you're training to fly, uh, learn to fly initially, you're flying in the likes of the Senecas and the Diamonds and the Seneca and the, the Pipers, etc. And uh, they're all what's flown by what's called single crew operation. They need one pilot to fly them. 
But for somebody who is going on to a career to fly airliners, they need to have a kind of an interface or an introduction into the, the big world of the of the jet airline aircraft as well, too. So to that end, we have the 737 simulator. This simulator that we have is an identical simulator to the one that Ryanair uses as well, too. Ryanair has a fleet of over 450 aircraft of what are called 737-800s. The simulator we have is the very same variant of that model as well, too. So what it does, it's it's twofold. It's it's introduced at the final part of the flight training itself. The first objective is it introduces the trainee or the, the near graduate to the environment of the, the flight deck on the, the modern jet airline uh, airliner. And it also teaches uh, or introduces you to the whole concept of working as a crew member. You're no longer um, a sole trader, if you like, you're now part of a, a very vibrant team. You're working with a captain and there's very much um, a very democratic structure between the roles of the captain and the first officer. Obviously the captain, he or she is the boss, but they share the chores with the first mm -hmm. officer. And the objective of this element of the course is to give an introduction into how that works. So you can actually work and inter interact with your captain and share your chores and conduct the, the flight safely. We operate in the base that two heads are better than one. So you'll always find there's more than there's always going to be at least two crew on, on the flight deck of the, the modern airline aircraft as well, too. Um, in relation to other facilities we have, we're totally self-contained at Cork Airport. We have our own uh, in-house maintenance department with our own qualified engineers, and we provide all our own in-house refueling as well, too. So we're totally self-sufficient. We have no reliance on third-party providers, which means that we control the pace at which we do things. We're not relying on somebody else's timetable to accommodate what we have to do. So that's a very important part of it as well, too. There is um, reference to Waterford Airport and the, the context of that is that it's, it's what we call a satellite base. Cork Airport, as I said, is a great airport for training in. Under ordinary circumstances, non-pandemic, when Cork Airport's a very vibrant uh, environment, during the summer season, it gets very busy with all the line traffic and people jetting off with their buckets and spades and having going off to enjoy their holidays. Um, and that tends to make the training for us a little bit disruptive because of all the, the coming and going of the, the big people. Um, so to that end, we have a, a smaller base in Waterford, which has very little commercial traffic. So there are certain phases of the training on the one hand where we have to interact with the big aircraft, but there's other phases where we need kind of quieter times to dedicate the training on people who are just learning the basics at the early stage of training. To that end, what we do is we, we, we rotate our, our, our trainees, our, our, um, down to, our cadets down to Waterford. They spent two, three weeks down there. We provide the accommodation for them. They learn the basics of landing and taking off aircraft. And then they come back to court to continue their training as well too. So Waterford is a very important component of our, our training uh, structure. So I think that covers the issues on that particular slide. That's um, perfect. Thanks. Thanks, Philip. And I might just ask Kyle Johnson to uh, join us to speak a little bit just about the outlook for aviation, because I guess for, for a lot of people, that's a little bit uncertain. You know, the pandemic has hit aviation hard, but there are quite strong projections that aviation is going to bounce back. Um, Kyle, can you just tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so, of course, um... We have seen the industry taking a little bit of a hit over the over the, the last sort of 12 to 18 months. Um, before we went into this pandemic and the airline industry was looking at a requirement for around about three quarters of a million pilots um, needed over the next 20 years. And that hasn't uh, gone away. That's that's going to be a continued requirement, albeit it's going to be delayed by the, the 12 to 18 months that um, the pandemic has brought about. Um, we can see it in the likes of uh, the requirements of Ryanair currently. You've probably heard um, the publicity that they've got the new 737 uh, MAX aircraft and they've 75 of those arriving before the end of the year. And each one of those aircraft needs 12 pilots. So you're talking in the region of an additional 900 pilots required just for Ryanair between now and sort of Q1 of next year. Um, that also doesn't take into account um, the number of uh, pilots that have retired over the last 18 months. So uh, a lot of them have uh, sort of uh, given up on, on the early mornings and trailing the bag uh, to work every day. And that has left sort of uh, a vacuum 
um, of you know about ten percent in all of the the airlines. Of course, we're hearing that airlines are having to find money and all of these other things, but the aircraft are all still out there. I'm sure you've heard it on the news. Everybody wants to get on their holidays. They all want to see a bit of sunshine. They all want to travel. Um, a lot of people are missing it. People uh, still have to commute for jobs, have to, you know, want to do uh, meetings and boardrooms all over the world. Um, you know, so people want to travel. And as the, uh, the, the countries open up again, we'll start to see that. And we'll actually see it start to grow as well. If you look at the industry over the past sort of 50 years, um, the graph has been um, in an upward trajectory all the way. It's had its blips uh, over the years. We had um, the oil crisis uh, 20 or 30 years ago. We had 9-11. We had the recession. And now we've had this. But every time the airline industry has bounced back and bounced back in a big way. And what you got to remember is with the models that Ryanair and Southwest Airlines came out with, uh, first of all, with it, but Ryanair has now taken it on, which is the low cost carrier. You now have the ability for over 90% of the population to travel by uh, aircraft. So, you know, once you get down to those sort of numbers, it means that aircraft are becoming your, your bus or taxi service. So we're expecting uh, when things open up that large pilots will be uh, needed um, over the coming years. Great. Thank you very much, Kyle. Um, I'm going to hand you over next to uh, two of my colleagues here from MTU. So initially, um, Michelle McManus and, and subsequently um, Colin Crowley. So Michelle, you have the floor there. Okay, thanks, Pio. Uh, good evening, all. Um, so I'm just going to talk to you first about why we developed this program, the rationale for it. So as Pio mentioned already, we have been running uh, for the last number of years, the online program for um, people who are already trained and working as pilots to then uh, continue with uh, doing a degree online while they're working. And I, I suppose the more we got involved with that and the more research we started to do, we realized that there's, you know, there is a, a gap in the market for people who are starting on that um, kind of career choice. So uh, we spoke to lots of potential pilots, a lot of people who were starting their training um, about, you know, what they're, and then a lot of the current pilots who are, who are actually um, uh, studying on the course that we're doing. And so many of them, you know, felt they missed out maybe on a college experience. They also felt that they missed out because they didn't have a degree. Um, and that's why a lot of them are doing the online course now. Um, research shows as well that a lot of um, pilots, um, they, they it, particularly a lot of organizations, um, look for a degree um, in order to for, for people to progress throughout the career as well. So as you move up the levels in your career in later years, a, a degree becomes more and more important. Um, we looked at kind of other models that were in within Ireland and and further afield as well. And there's nothing like what we're doing in Ireland or I think throughout Europe. Am I right in saying? Yeah. Um, that allows you to say, you know, start your pilot training after one year and um, that allows you to complete your pilot training and your degree within four years. Um, it's it's some it's a brilliant opportunity for somebody who wants to fly, as I'm sure many of you do but also allowing you to get the degree within those four years. So it doesn't delay flying as much as some other models. We looked at the option in Carlo, the option in DCU, and it's, it takes a lot longer to get through those programs and to start your flying as well. Um, another thing that we're very aware of, um, particularly when we initially developed the other program, um, is that as pilots, you undertake a lot of training. You you work in a highly regulated industry. It's, you know, it, it's really important that we recognize that learning so that we could build it into a degree by working so closely with Atlantic Flight Training Academy and by developing this program, by recognizing all of that, uh, all of the training that you do for those two years um, at AFTA to feed into the degree. And uh, I suppose another thing is that, you know, it's it's hard, as many of you probably are aware, it's hard to find maybe information about how to get into um, uh, training as a pilot because, well, there's a, very little on the CAO system. I think the DCU program is the only thing on the CAO. I don't think the Carlo one is. So this was, um, you know, an opportunity to get something on the CAO to make it may maybe more open to people and to uh, treat it as any other career that in that you can, you can go to college, you can do your degree as well as doing your pilot training. So 
So um, we thought that, that it was important to do that as well. So in terms of the structure, um, so as we said, four years, your first year is on campus at Munster Technological University on the Bishopstown campus, as Pio said there. Um, and I'll, I'll mention about kind of what you do at each stage and, uh, uh, in a minute, but you're doing a variety of business modules there, um, particularly international business, because um, it fits very closely with, you know, what you're going, where you're going to end up working anywhere around the world, I suppose, eventually. Um, so that's one year in Bishopstown campus. Then you spend two years in your your flight training at AFTA um, based in Cork, as uh, Philip spoke about, and uh, some training in Waterford there. So the idea is that then following successful completion of your first three years, you will have a frozen ATPL, which uh, Colin will talk about there in a minute as well. And then you'll um, hopefully you'll start working as a pilot at that stage and you'll you'll finish your fourth year online through Munster Technological University. Um, so, you know, there's no delay after this, the, the two years of flight training. Um, you have your pilot's license, you get a job and, and you can actually start flying and, and, you know, get going with your career and then just work online on the last year of your degree. Um, so just in terms of year one, the focus, as we said, is on business. Um, it's international business. You'll be looking at things like uh, marketing, finance, um, global business, a little bit of information technology. Um, there's no prior business knowledge required. Um, on any of our business courses, we would always have some students who actually come and haven't done business. Um, so you don't feel you don't feel you would be left out there or anything because you don't have to have it done. Um, it's all started from an, a low initial level. Um, you can also, there's also the opportunity to study a language. If you have done a language up to leaving search, there's French, German or Spanish that would be offered as advanced uh, languages, which might be something that would interest you again, given the career that you're looking towards. Um, classes generally you'll be working it, your your class contact will be about 18 hours per week with a little bit of extra time there for um, doing any assignments in that and our college year will go from September to May and um, so for year one so Colin will mention there and um, we'll discuss stages two and three so years two and three everybody so thanks Michelle um, so yeah so my name is Colin Crowley uh, I'm a senior first officer with a large Irish low-cost airline and uh, I'm a part-time lecturer here named to you as well um, I've been on both sides of the fence. I came through, uh, I'm a graduate of Atlantic Flight Training Academy, um, and I'm also a graduate of uh, CIT, now MTU. Um, unfortunately, when I was doing my training, this kind of programme didn't exist. And if it had, I would have jumped all over it, because when I was doing my degree in my flight training, I had to do them both together, but there was no, there was no exemptions for my flight training um, towards a degree or anything like that. So I was doing my degree uh, actually by night. I was doing my flight training in mornings and weekends and I was working at the same time. So to have an opportunity like this, I'm sure for anybody that's interested in getting into flying, um, it, 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 it's, it's definitely going to be a, a very appealing way for anybody to go. Um, look at Atlantic Flight Training Academy. Like it says here, all training is carried out in Ireland. This is something that's mentionable because there's um, some of the other uh, flight schools will say, they actually require their students to locate to different parts of the world to complete their flight training, which obviously adds on more cost and it adds on more time as well. Um, but um, students going through AFTA will be very lucky that they get to experience all the Irish airspace, all the different types of terrain um, and the different Irish weather as well, which led to their skill sets. Um, with regards then to actually starting years two and three, um, we call year one in, in MTU year one, but it's not actually a full calendar year. It's an academic year. Um, so students can expect to spend about nine months on campus at MTU um, before starting their uh, flight training in AFTA. So around June of year two, they, they can expect to start flying, um, which is a very short space of time. They've got year one of their degree behind them already, and uh, they're ready to start their flying um, with an aimed into finishing their flight training in December of year three. So in around uh, 16 to 18 months uh, in total. Um, Lots of content to be covered. So classes, as it says here, various, there's all different types of things. And I'm sure a lot of you will know the, the, the areas that will be covered, everything from operations, how the airplane actually flies, principles of flight, um, everything. The integrated flight program, as it says here, um, as I'm sure you can all appreciate, going taking someone with zero flight hours and making them into an airline pilot um, and training them to the highest standards is no mean feat. And that's what something like the Integrated Flight Training Programme was actually developed for. It's actually package all of this and turn out someone who's ready to ready to apply for an airline position. Um, graduates, when they come to the end of this stage in year three, they will have what's known in the industry as a frozen airline transport pilot's license. Um, 
at that stage, once they've got all their ratings complete and everything is done again in-house at Atlantic Flight Training Academy, um, they're ready to commence employment. And as Michelle was touching on this earlier, there's something that's key because it means that once you leave, once you complete year three at AFTA, um, you're ready to seek employment because it is a considerable investment, but you can start getting a return on that investment again in a very short uh, space of time. Um, everything is done in-house in AFTA, including the ATPL exams. Um, AFTA has the... Um, AFTA has a designated examination centre by the Irish Aviation Authority, so everything is done in-house there, the same as if when you go to MTU, you do everything in-house in MTU, when you go to AFTA, you do everything in-house in AFTA, so it's a perfect fit for what, for what this degree is actually all about. And that leads us in into year four, which I think is Michelle is going to discuss. Yep, thanks, Colin. Yep, so um, as we mentioned there, uh, following and, and as Colin finished with there, uh, the idea is that you would start working at the end of or, or midway through year three when you have your uh, frozen ATPL and, and all of your pilot training done. So then you come back. I should say, come back. It's online, uh, regardless of the pandemic. This is online, no, no matter what is going on, um, so that you will continue to work. We're, um, as we already have a program that we um, offer to pilots that is specific for pilots um, to, to um, carry out their degree, we're very familiar with dealing with online programs. We're also very familiar with the schedules of a pilot when things are operating as normal. So it, all interactions would be online with MTU at this stage. All assignments are online and um, you're not expected to come anywhere near campus at any stage um, so that it allows you to work and to work wherever it is around the world that you actually are working at that stage. So this would be a full calendar year in this case, um, September of year four to August of your fourth year as well. To August the following year um, and you would uh, generally for throughout that time you would have three semesters over that time with about six hours of contact time for class plus plenty of independent study at that stage so it means that you can really um, you know you can you can fit your time according to your schedule I mean uh, you know classes are run at very different times of the day because you're never going to find a time that suits all pilots so everything is recorded everything is available online for you so it's it really fits in with that um, schedule that you might have or, or changing schedule. So again, at this stage, you would be looking at global business areas like things like strategy management, um, management itself. You do a global business project. You can uh, do uh, electives in the area of law and operations. You do aviation, business environment, economics modules. So you have a number of modules that you're required to do. And then you have a lot of electives at this stage as well. So depending on what areas interest yourself. OK, so P.O., Thanks, Michelle. Yeah, so we've given you a, a good sense, I suppose, of the, the overview of the programme, what it looks like and so on and, and how it came about. Um, I suppose in terms of brass tacks, we need to give you a sense of maybe the, the process for someone who's looking to do this programme at this stage. So we're going to talk you through the, the entry criteria in just a moment, as well as subsequently the costs, which, which remain you know, significant compared to most CAO programmes. Uh, and then just the timelines around the um, onboarding of this programme um, for September. So I'm going to hand you over briefly to Sarah Godfrey, who's going to talk about the, um, the entry and the selection process for, uh, with regard to Atlantic Flight Training Academy. Thanks, Pia. Um, yes, yeah, so sir. in regards to AFTA um, entry requirements, you would need to hold a valid EU Class 1 medical, um, preferably before applying, uh, just so that you know there's no issues. Uh, you can move forward through your first year MTU and then uh, join us for your second and third year. Um, and then there's an assessment process, initial assessment process with AFTA, which has three stages. Um, so you'll complete an online cut E assessment, uh, psychometric and talent measurement. A uh, few of these will be things like aptitude tests, um, multitasking abilities, um, spatial orientation, reaction speed, and others will be behavioral tests such as work-related behavior and situational behavior. Um, depending on your um, pass rate on this, you can either apply for the Ryanair Mentor Program or the uh, Fully Integrated Program. Um, the following two stages of the assessment will be the simulator assessment, where you'll get to um, do a simulator test in the DA42 or the Seneca simulators in our uh, operations. And this will just be basic maneuvers that you'll be asked to do by one of our flight instructors, just to see how you cope with taking instruction and your capacity and ability to manage um, different maneuvers. 
Uh, and then the final stage would be the interview process. Um, there'll be an HR side and a technical side where um, our, one of our senior instructors and business operations manager will take you through the interview process. Um, pending all of that, then you'll be accepted onto either the Ryanair or the fully integrated course and you can continue on to the course. Great. Thank you very much, Sarah. Mm -hmm. So um, I think one of the considerations is obviously an important factor in the aviation um, uh, training area is just the costs. And uh, we, I guess uh, we just wanted to um, present those to you as, the, as they currently stand. Um, the year one fee are the standard kind of student tuition fees that are charged by every uh, university in, in the country. Depending on your personal circumstances, you may or may not receive um, financial support from the, the SUSE, which is the National Grants Agency for this program. Um, again, they have their own kind of criteria around that, uh, which looks at kind of financial circumstances and, and various other factors. Uh, but if that is not available, then the standard fee is 3,007, which sounds like a really odd number, but there's, there's a long story behind the seven in particular. Um, and that's payable to MTU at that point. The total fee then uh, in terms of years two and three, um, aside from some exclusions, uh, is 79,000, um, which is payable in a number of installments over the two year period um, to Atlantic Flight Training Academy. And, and, and there's a small fee to Munster Technological University at that point. The reason why that's there is that we want um, the students to re retain access uh, to the campus and, and to be able to use all the services that are available in that regard. And there's some statutory obligations around that. The final year feed in relates to um, your online program, which is, is three and a half thousand euros. Again, payable in a number of installments at that stage as you're completing the program, hopefully after you've started work and so on. There are other expenses. Again, we've detailed um, any other costs that are, are relate to this program. Um, on the website and, and you can have a look at those in a while. One thing to be conscious of is that various airlines do charge um, costs for, for type rating, type rating rather, and that varies from airline to airline. So certain airlines charge nothing for that. Other airlines might charge up to 30,000 euros. So that's just a cost that again, if you're interested in aviation, you probably have been aware of it anyway, but it is something that just needs to be factored in when you're making your decision about this program and any other program. So um, I suppose penultimately for myself, I just want to talk you through what the what the process is in terms of if you're interested in this program, um, what you would actually need to do in order to, to uh, get enrolled on the program. So the, the first step is to apply for the program on the MTU website. At the moment, the MTU website leads you to the old CIT website, which is just as we're making a transition uh, to new branding, etc. But you apply, you submit your details there. We commit then with an MTU to doing a quick review of that within one week and, and providing your details at that point to Atlantic Flight Training Academy, who will contact you around the selection process uh, regarding the uh, simulators and, and the various interviews that Sarah spoke about just a while. And for this year, uh, we're, we're hoping to make a decision within four weeks. If all is successful at that point, uh, then a conditional offer will be issued to you. And the reason why it's conditional at that point is we still need to await your Leaving Cert results uh, um, for, for, for this year, if you're taking the Leaving Cert this year. Uh, if you've done the Leaving Cert other years, then we can make that decision a little bit faster. Uh, but certainly that's something we just need to factor in. There's no points um, this year uh, because uh, even though the program is listed on the CAO, we're handling, handling the, um, the, the applications directly ourselves. Uh, if all is in order with your Leaving Cert results and you've received a conditional offer, then the program would start in mid-September. We're hoping to have students on campus um, and that the pandemic will be coming very quickly to an end. That's our hope with all our full-time students uh, for the year ahead. But again, obviously that's subject to just public health uh, regulations at the time. So in, in just a moment, I, I'm just going to introduce um, Captain Mark Casey, just to say a, a couple of, of words before we open up into the Q&A. Um, but I guess my key bit of advice at this stage to anyone who's thinking about a career in aviation as a pilot then you would be mad not to consider this program because it, this program basically gives you the best of both worlds. It gives you the opportunity to become a commercial pilot 
very quickly, so within three years and, and less depending on your own uh, trajectory. And um, it also allows you to be uh, very well on the road to get your degree within four years uh, in parallel to each other. And that is uh, actually something that's exceptional, uh, to be quite honest. Um, the, 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 the value of having a degree is something Michelle has spoke about. It's something that's understood in the industry, but which many pilots don't get the opportunity to take advantage of. So you, as someone who's thinking about a career in aviation, uh, you're giving yourself an enormous safety net um, in setting off by having your degree. You're giving yourself the opportunity to go to college uh, for a year and be on campus and experience all that goes with that. You know, you'll be involved in clubs and societies if you wish, you'll fall in and out of love possibly multiple times and all that goes with that. And you, you'll get the chance to meet new people while also just becoming a little bit more mature and that's never any, any harm. Um, you get the chance to work with the best uh, flight training academy in the country and far beyond uh, and work with the excellent people that are uh, involved with Atlantic Flight Training Academy and so doing. And at the end of it, your prospects um, couldn't be better uh, than, than by doing both those things. So uh, Mark, if you, if you don't mind, maybe you can just say a couple of words and we'll start um, responding to people's questions. And again, feel free to type your questions into the chat and we'll, we'll take them from there. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, uh, thanks, Pio. Can you, can you hear me there? We can indeed, yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah, thanks, Pio. And uh, thanks to Pio and the team um, at uh, MTU, you know, um, you know, for bringing this uh, degree forward uh, to fruition. Um, uh, we've been working on the uh, on the project for quite some time um, with uh, formerly CIT and MTU now. And, um, you know, we're delighted to have uh, <clears throat> been chosen by uh, PO and the team, you know, to move this forward. And I think it's, uh, it's um, the energy behind this is, uh, you know, credit has to be given uh, to, to Kyle really and, uh, and, and Pio for, for bringing it to this stage. And as Pio says, it's a fantastic opportunity. Um, we were up with Ryanair, would be our biggest partner. We have a number of airline partners, which you can see on our website, um, <clears throat> a number of low fares and a number of legacy type carriers. And uh, more recently, a BizJet operation um, has joined as a partner. But um, what, what we see in Ryanair is euphoric right now. Uh, myself and uh, Kyle were up to visit their new training centre and we were hoping to see their new 737 MAX simulator and we hung around for about half a day and we couldn't get near it. Um, the simulator was, 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 was just booked out, um, you know, from dawn to dusk um, because Ryanair are taking delivery of you know, somewhere around 250 um, new 737-8200s, which is the, the upgraded version of, of the MAX that had a few issues and got some bad publicity. So they've, they've reinvented the airplane and, and rewired it effectively. And uh, it's now being relaunched as the MAX 8200. And, uh, and Ryanair have a large order for, for these aircraft in. And, um, you know, they were explaining to us you know, the viability of these aircraft in, in, in the new aviation world. You know, um, one of these new 737-8200s flying up and down to Tenerife can save two tonnes of fuel on a good day. So, you know, when you work out those numbers monetarily, um, it, 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 it's huge statistics when you multiply that by 500 airplanes in the future, probably seven or 800 airplanes. And you rotate that, air, rotate that airplane twice a day, four grand an airplane, 700 airplanes. You can do the figures. It's lots of money. So, you know, they're very, very excited about the future. They're seeing huge uptick in um, passenger bookings. And I saw it myself on Sunday, um, traveling uh, across Europe, for, initially from um, Ireland to Amsterdam. And uh, there was six people on the flight. And then from Amsterdam to Vienna, the flight was full. And then I was operating back and uh, back into Europe, flight full, back to Ireland, uh, flight empty. So I think what we see here in Ireland, we've, we've taken, you know, whether correctly or incorrectly, we've, we've very, very strict lockdown and people aren't moving. 
what, what, what the airlines are seeing is people are starting to move again, especially in mainland Europe. And the airlines that we deal with are seeing robust um, upturn in, in bookings, forward bookings. I think the end of the summer um, is going to be fantastic, as, as Kyle was saying earlier. And we're going to see a lot more positivity. This is a great time to train. Um, you know, it's going to take you four years to get through the degree. You'll be flying after three, um, you know, and it's a fantastic time to upskill. And <clears throat> we're seeing it already. We're seeing people getting called um, off our programs to start training so that the airlines are ready to fly um, once Europe opens up and the vaccination rate um, uh, improves. I think we're all seeing now already, we all know people that have been fully, most of our parents have been fully vaccinated and we all know people that are getting called, you know, even in their even in their 50s now, they're getting called for vaccines and next month will be people in their 40s, 30s, uh, working down to the 20s. So this is all positive um, and fantastic for the recovery of aviation. Um, you know, we have a very kind of open, um, it's not a hierarchical um, operation in AFTA. Um, you know, there has to be um, authority, but, um, you know, we do operate an, an open door policy and uh, it's a bit tighter than being um, maybe in a classroom in university. You know, you have to turn up and stuff like that uh, all the time. Um, but, um, you know, it's a very welcoming environment and for people that are dedicated, focused and want a career um, in this industry, it's never been a better time to train. And we look forward to seeing some of you um, and most of you, hopefully, um, joining the um, degree with MTU. So lovely to see you here tonight. And uh, thanks, Bill. Thanks very much, Mark. That's great. So I'm just going to answer some of the questions that have come in. Uh, some of these are, are, are duplicates, so if, if I don't call out your name, don't worry. Um, and uh, I'll be handing you over to some people who might have more specialist knowledge than me. Um, I'm a, a marketer, so I, I don't know the ins and outs of uh, airline registrations or anything like that. So firstly, um, just is the course covered by the SUSE grant? The SUSE grant might apply just to year one. Um, that's, that's the only uh, point at which it might, might apply. There are kind of moves afoot to try to do something about the, the cost of aviation training, generally speaking, but it's unlikely to progress any anytime soon. Um, there are a couple of questions just about um, the amount of points required um, in the Leaving Cert for this program. But uh, as I've mentioned, just for this year, there are no points as regards this. You just need to get the minimum entry criteria as regards the Leaving Cert and, and, and pass the selection process uh, for the aviation aspect of it. Um, we have another question just about, um, is the global business part of the degree at least somewhat recognised as normal level eight uh, business degree? So it's, it's, it's not at least somewhat, it's totally recognised as, as a level eight business degree. So this is a, a level eight business degree in effect. You'll have covered um, 120 credits of business knowledge. But the key thing is that, that that level of knowledge that you have coming out emanating from the programme will open most doors here. You're not going to become an accountant but pretty much any other opportunity would certainly uh, be open to you at that stage. Um, there's a question from Jack Doyle just about the Leaving Cert subjects that might be chosen for this programme. Again, it's, it's, it's useful to, um, I suppose, keep an open mind always with the Leaving Cert. Uh, things that might be useful from the business perspective include the business modules. From the aviation perspective, it, it's useful to have a, a numerical ability and to be able to handle maths. Having a little bit of uh, physics certainly would be an advantage, an advantage. But again, these things aren't critical. They're things you can develop during the program. The aptitude test that you do as part of the selection process will test you in some of these. So you obviously need some level of ability, but it's more about the aptitude rather than the, the knowledge. So that's something to bear in mind. Uh, we have a, a question about the deadline for applications. At the moment, we're saying the 1st of August for deadlines. Um, however, if you're interested in doing this program and if you're, 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 you're strongly intending on doing it, then the sooner you apply, the better. It gives us a, a better chance to ensure that you get through the, the, the selection process and uh, it gives you time to plan towards the program. So this is something I, I would really very strongly uh, emphasize. Um, there's a further question about CEO points, but for the year after next, and again, it's impossible to say 
of what they would be at that stage because the CAO points always relate to supply and demand. So basically, the more people that want to do a program, the higher the, 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 the uh, points go. So that's something I can maybe have a better stab at answering maybe in about six months time uh, at that stage. So next question I'm going to hand over to someone just as I take a little drink of water. It's a question from Tony Bofi and it's like, how likely are you to get a, getting a job in year four and what is the starting salary? So maybe Kyle, would you like to just take that question just about the prospects having completed the um, pilot's training? What are the opportunities thereafter? Um, yeah, well, the, the, the career that you're going into is is varied. You you have an awful lot of options. You, you, you've got all the, the major airlines that are ca uh, carry passengers, but you've also got uh, cargo. You can become a flight instructor. Um, there are many other avenues that you can go down. If, you're, if you were to start now, and we're talking about four years from now, then based on uh, the figures that Airbus and Boeing are producing in numbers of aircraft um, that they are have on order and the airlines want to operate, then the like, likelihood is uh, that you have very good chances of getting a job. In fact, we're, we're sort of getting indications that airlines might even be fighting over getting uh, first officers in the door in the next 18 months to two years time. So um, everything seems to be very encouraging um, in the industry. Um, over the next sort of 12 to 18 months. So hopefully beyond that, um, you should have a very good choice, uh, chance of getting into the industry. And, and Kyle, could you just say a word maybe about salaries in the aviation sector for pilots typically? Um, salaries, they, they, they vary depending on the airline that you go into and um, the, the way that the training is done. When you finish a, a flight training program with a, a school like, your set, like ourselves, uh, and after you will then apply to an airline once you apply to that airline then what you've got to do is you've got to learn to fly their aircraft their way so for example with with Ryanair you'd have to fly uh, something like a 737 or a 737 max if you were to go to easyjet you'd probably have to learn to fly an airbus and to fly those things costs money you know somewhere between 25 and 30 thousand now some of the airlines that you apply for um, they may ask you to pay for it, um, but the, the sort of model sort of up until last year was that um, the airlines would bond you or they would give you sort of the equivalent of an interest-free loan that you paid it over a number of years. So it, it sort of depends on what way you enter. Um, typically, a first officer in their first year in a low-cost carrier would be 50, 60 to, 50 to 60,000 euros, and that would go up probably between five and ten thousand euros per year um once you get to sort of year four year five where you've sort of between three and a half to five thousand hours you may get offered command and you're probably up around 75 to eighty thousand euros um also by that stage normally you have enough experience that the middle eastern airlines become very interested in you and they will really pay for your services so um, you could be on six figures uh, going down to somewhere like Etihad or Emirates or Qatar. Um, again, you'll be bonded with them. You'll have to fly with them for between seven and 10 years, but you can earn a lot of money um, if, if you're able to travel and your situation allows you to do that. So um, yeah, salaries are, are, are quite high because they know that you've got to pay back uh, a lot of money because you've spent a lot on your training. And as you have the floor there, Kyle, I'm just going to ask another question that has come in um, from Kean, and it's how do you kind of help students find employment after the third year? I know that uh, Atlantic Flight Training Academy has a very strong professional development development uh, program. Yeah, yeah. So it, it was a gap that we noticed um, a number of years ago that um, even though students had the full qualification to join an airline, um, they may struggle when actually applying to an airline for a number of reasons. So uh, one was um, airlines like uh, a CV in a certain format, which is very different to formats that you'd be applying to other jobs. So what we do in sort of when you're coming to the end of the training course with us is we'll teach you how to write that CV and we'll give you uh, tips and tricks on how to uh, make it look good for your prospective employers. 
We also um, will help you with interview technique um, because most employers will do some sort of uh, interview with you. And that takes, uh, there's two components to that interview. There's a technical interview, which they'll ask you questions based on the theory exams that you did during your training about the aircraft that you fl flew, about the aircraft that you're going to fly to see what interest you have in that, what study you've done. And then there's a non-technical aspect, which is really about your general attitudes, your personality, um, towards the job and how you interact with other people. And again, we will do training with you in that to help you uh, gain uh, experience in that. For a lot of people coming straight out of um, uh, college, they may have not gone for a job before. So this could be their first interview. So again, they may need a lot of, of help and experience doing that. And the final bit that an airline will ask for is they will ask you to do a simulator check. Um, and all airlines ask this. So again, even though we've trained you to the level um, that you have the license to fly the aircraft, they may give you certain things in the simulator that you haven't done in a little while. So what we do is we, we, we bring you into our simulators before you go for that assessment. And we just bring you back up to standard again, just with a little bit of retraining uh, before you head off for the, for the interview and assessment. And that's all included uh, in the package that we offer. Fantastic. Okay, thanks, Kyle. And, and I'm just going to answer a few more questions, but I may be returning to, to Kyle and colleagues, Philip and others, uh, just with some of the, the, the queries. So uh, one of the questions is just about is the employment guaranteed after year three, and, and, and it wouldn't be guaranteed, unfortunately, uh, the world is too variable uh, to, 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 to determine that. However, we'd be very hopeful of uh, employment opportunities. And again, having emerged from uh, Atlantic Flight Training Academy, your opportunities are better than if you uh, um, emerged from anywhere else. So thanks for that question. There's also just a question about how many places are available on the course. And uh, I suppose we're planning for between five and 20 each year. Again, it'll depend on, on demand from year to year. And obviously if, it, if it's higher than that, we'll, we'll look at it um, on a case by case basis. Um, I guess we remain open-minded. Um, we do like to have a, a kind of minimum number in any program that we have so that people get the experience of, of being together and getting to know a group of people and, and, and traveling through a course with them at that stage, you know. Um, there's also just a question about can you apply with A-levels and, and yes is the answer there. Uh, so we have a, a mechanism for converting A-levels to leave insert uh, equivalents. So that's something that you can do. Just provide detail in your application and, and we'll be able to take it from there. Um, there's, there's a question perhaps for Philip or Kyle again, just at the end of the program, the frozen ATPL uh, license issued by the Irish um, Aviation Authority will be EASA certified. Uh, is there any conversion privilege to UK ATPL licenses or maybe you can tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, I, I'll have a go at that one. Um, so yeah, the, this is there's a bit of controversy to say the least at the moment, and this is uh, following on from Brexit. Brexit, unfortunately, um, uh, I, at the moment, if you hold an EASA license, it depends when it was issued. Um, you can get an authorization to fly G registered aircraft, which is UK registered aircraft, and that will last until the end of next year. Um, for anybody coming out with EASA licenses now, currently the uh, UK CAA have said that you will have to do a conversion course, which means that you will have to do further sets of examinations and two flight tests in order to get um, a UK issued license. So we're hoping that that might be, uh, it might change over the next six to 12 months, but that's uh, where the UK authority currently stands. Great. Thanks, Kyle. So there's a question here as well from Aidan, uh, just about when would you want to do the class one medical? Now, that would be done as part of the selection process um, through the Atlantic Flight Training Academy as part of your way through that, that, that process, I guess. Uh, it's valid for a certain period of time. I think it's, it's 12 months, isn't it, Kyle? Yeah, yeah. So your, your class one is valid for 12 months. Now, you only need a class one when uh, you start uh, our full-time course, um, it, the course is, is 18 months long, so it will lapse, but you don't have to renew it in that period of time. You, you only will renew it at the end. And a class one medical, when it does lapse, it reverts to what we call a class two medical, which actually is a, val a validity of a further four years. 
So, um, yeah, you, you would really uh, you would need to have a class one medical before you start the flight training. Very good. So there's a, a good question there. If there's such demand for pilots within airlines, do you not think the airlines will offer direct cadet chips? And obviously, and the, there is that demand for pilots that will will redevelop. I guess the the advantage here is about making sure that you yourself have options and and giving yourself uh, flexibility, not just in the short term but in the medium and long term as well. So the, the benefit of this is that it would just a uh, very little extra time you're getting yourself a degree and that degree is you'll find probably most beneficial in 15 or 20 years time uh, in, in many respects but it's much harder for you to do one at that point because of the nature of your career and so on that's a, a, a very good question thank you yeah sorry Pia, if i can just jump in there please and just add on to that that i, I get the impression that the a lot of people are considering this course on the base that it gives them that sort of the safety net, if you like, the, the the degree under their belt as well too, and that's that's a very fair comment as well. But thinking about, it, I think there are a couple of other dis dis distinct advantages as well too. Like in the past, flying the airplane was basically getting from A to B, and it was you know basic enough. But now, the aircraft is so more sophisticated that the the crew on board are really managing the systems on the aircraft. They're managers. They're looking after the aircraft, the equipment, the environment they're working in. Their 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 uh, colleagues on the on the the aircraft. And most importantly, the passengers as well, too. So the whole, the added value of having that management, uh, the, that, that, that degree um, competency, I think is a help in that sense. And a, and a final point I'd make as well, too, is that I, I'm quite satisfied it will open doors for pilots who are graduates further down the road, because there are so many opportunities nowadays for, for pilots as, they, as they, they're with a company, particularly with the bigger airlines, to move into management roles and they'll have a distinct, that extra um, feather in their cap, if you like, the, the fact they've got a degree will open that door for them as well too and give them other ex new opportunities as their careers develop as well. And if I just add, add another thing onto that uh, from what Philip said is that we, we find as well, uh, sort of uh, pre-COVID um, when there was a requirement for pilots um, the Middle Eastern airlines were requiring you to have a third level education, even though you had a full pilot's license and you may have had 10,000 of hours behind you, they required you to have a third level education. So some of the bigger airlines do require it as part of their entry program. Great. Thanks very much, Kyle. Um, so there, there's um, still points just coming in about the, the CEO points. To, just to reiterate, there are no CEO points for, for the year ahead. And in, in following years, we, we just don't know uh, um, yet. Um, there, there is a question just about specific eyesight requirements in the class one medical. Um, and uh, Kyle, I might just offer that one to you again. Yeah, I'll... What was the question? Sorry, Pio, I lost you there. No problem at all. Um, so just a question about are there specific eyesight requirements as regards to class one medical? Um, yes, there are. And you'd have to refer to the medical centre. But that said, this is, um, that, you know, short sighted, long sighted. Uh, really what they look at is um, the difference uh, between the two, the left and right eye. That that That's sort of their main consideration. But um, there's very, very few people would fail based on eyesight requirements. You don't have to have 20-20 vision. We're, we're not, uh, you know, we're not looking for uh, astronauts or, or military aviators or anything like that. So, um, yeah, it, uh, you're, you don't have to have perfect uh, vision. You also don't have to look like the perfect specimen either uh, to get the class one medical. Yeah. Thanks, Kyle. Um, there's just another question coming in just regarding the Ryanair program that you have as well at Atlantic Flight Training Academy. Um, what is the difference in expectations in terms of being eligible for the Ryanair cad uh, cadetship compared to the integrated program? Okay, so the the, the, the Ryanair cadetship is, is pitched uh, at a different level. Um, it, they, they require um, sort of higher marks or grades uh, abilities coming out of out of the program so they expect higher going into it if i give you a little bit of background on, on where this came about from or, uh, originally it might explain what the program is about where it came from um ryanair uh, typically up again up to sort of mid 2019 
uh, annually would need in the region of between eight and 900 pilots per year uh, coming in. Um, what they were finding is when they were doing assessing new pilots coming in from flight schools all across pass rate um, for that assessment. Um, and they said there's, there's, you know, there's got to be something wrong because you're all learning the same, uh, you know, to the same regulation, to the same license, but yet 50% are failing and 50% are passing. So what they then did was they looked at some major uh, of the larger flight schools around Europe that had sent them potential students um, that had a high pass rate. And we were one of those. We had at that time in the uh, pass rates in the high 80%. And they basically said to us, like, you're doing something right. So, you know, um, we'll work with you. We'll try and improve your system. Um, you'll improve our system. And we'll try and get the level of entrant up a lot higher so that when they graduate and come into the airline, they'll be at a lot higher standard. They'll pass any assessments that they throw at that that we throw at them a lot better. So that's what we did. We built a program around that. We shared information. You have a lot more access to people like Colin who are active um, pilots. You get a, a visit site to aircraft. Um, you get access to all the the company documentation and everything. Um, and what they have found is, and again, this is something that uh, Mark and I were visiting Ryanair last week. Um, the outcome with that is typically when a pilot completes their type rating training with Ryanair, they're seeing that the sector numbers, in other words, the line training flights before you're signed off on the aircraft um, as of completing your training, normally is in around 80 uh, sectors. But what they're looking at from our graduates that have come through the mentor program is they're doing it in 50 to 60 sectors. So they've reduced it by 15 to 20 percent. And of course, that means they're getting pilots through faster and it's costing the airline a lot less. So there's big advantages in doing it this way. So that's that's where the whole promotion has come from. Um, so it gives the candidate a lot higher chances of getting into the airline and being successful when they're in there. Very good. Thank you very much, Kyle. Uh, there's a couple of questions coming in from various people just about people who already have degrees and the opportunities that that presents. What I just, uh, um, or, or whether that allows them access to this program, what I would just ask is to drop me an email specifically on that at po.fenton.caat.e and I'll just look at your, your individual circumstances and um, to clarify that. Um, there are, um, I suppose, just a couple of other questions. Uh, there's a question just regarding installments for payments, and, and there is indeed an installment schedule uh, in place for, for the four years of the programme, and uh, the, the details of that are on the um, website as well, where you can find out more about how that breaks down. And <clears throat> they are also, if I can just uh, find my, my chat here again. so number of places in the program just I might, I might have confused some people there with that uh, and forgive me for for so we'll, we'll be taking up to 20 people onto the program for the year ahead uh, specifically onto this degree program into year one and if there are more than 20 applicants who are eligible for the program then we we'll look at increasing it at that stage so there, there won't be most likely a capacity issue or anything like that so that's just something to put people's minds at ease we do encourage you though to apply as, as quickly as possible, I guess. Um, there, is, there is a good question here, uh, again, uh, from someone who says, if you finished the four years of the degree and you believe that the aviation industry isn't for you, okay, or certainly a career as a pilot, then there are options for you there. And that's the benefit of the, of the business experience that you'll have developed at that stage. Um, it would be, I suppose, something that can happen in, in the sector where people decide that this isn't for them. It's, a, it's, a, it's something that, um, I suppose by having the business degree, then you realize that you actually have other options. And as I mentioned earlier, the business degree would be recognized as a business degree. The fact that you've some commercial flight training behind you will probably make you stand out in an interview context. And I, I would imagine that it would open doors into many careers aside from, as I say, probably accountancy and finance as dedicated careers. But again, it's funny how, how, how uh, people do get into, into opportunities uh, from general business degrees as time goes through. Uh, does it, the query is about refunding if, if, if someone leaves the program halfway through. 
Um, so I, I know within um, the first year of the programme, there are certain dates if you withdraw uh, that you get a certain portion of your, your, your um, fees back. And uh, I can't speak to that situation in, in Atlantic. Kyle, you might be able to just offer a quick perspective there. Yeah, similarly, um, uh, again, the, the, the fees are paid in installments and um, anything that, that any any finance that you, you haven't used um, in terms of flights, uh, simulators, ground school or equipment that, 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 that is left on credit in the account is normally given back uh, to the student minus a, a, an administration fee. Great. Thanks very much, Kyle. Um, do you improve the chances of getting on the course if you have a PPL? And, and the, the short answer there is no, not really, because <laughs> you don't need a PPL to do the programme. However, obviously, the fact that you have flight experience will be an assistance to you as you're doing your, your interviews and going through the selection process. Um, but it, it's not something that we will kind of shortlist or provide places on the basis of. It might just help you get through the selection process in terms of the um, the, uh, the aviation aspect of things. So I, if um, I jump in, add to that, it, the, the other advantage too, it would actually reduce the, the cost of the, the flight training course as well too, by virtue mm -hmm. of the fact you've already obtained a PPL by the time you've, you've come to us. So it does make a financial. And the other thing too is we'll get you through the training program quicker because you've already completed that phase of the training. Yeah, that's actually um, something I hadn't thought of. Um, obviously, one of the things that will happen with the flight training, your marks will be captured and, and recorded, etc. So there would be a little bit of work done there just to, to give you a mark for, for your prior learning. But as Philip said, it's a really, uh, it, can, it can help if you have it done in that sense in terms of speeding things up. Thanks, Philip. Um, so I think we're down to just our, our last few questions at this stage. Um, the um, a question again for Kyle, if I may, um, what are any students who did the Ryanair Minter program that could turn down for employment? That might be uh, something you, you may have. We're, we're, we're in the very uh, uh, happy position to say no, um, they haven't. Um, the first graduates from our Ryanair Mentor program finished in February and there have been 38 um, have uh, successfully finished and gone through for aptitude uh, uh, assessment with Ryanair and we have 100% success rate so far. So all 38 have gone through. So uh, it's great news for the beginning of the program. It's also great news for those students as well because they've worked uh, extremely hard um, to come out still in the middle of or towards the end of the COVID and they've We've uh, gone straight into uh, Ryanair and started their type rating. So they're they're hoping to be flying seven three sevens in the next three to four months. So it's it's great news. And just I think one last question for yourself, Kyle, and I think I'll be able to close things out then at that stage. Uh, can we do a, a modular Ryanair mentor program? We do have a a gateway system. Yes. Um, so um, if if you. Uh, don't if your situation doesn't allow you to do a full-time program or you already have some flight training um you can enter at what we call gateways so there you can if, if you get in touch with us we can send you details on what those gateways are what they involve what the pre-entry requirements are so if you uh if, if you email us on that we, we we can send you all the details on that very good. So um, I'm just going to conclude with just a, a couple of comments on the application process and just a little bit of advice, I guess, overall. I mean, I think those of you that have been with us for the evening, hopefully we've answered as many of your questions as possible. The next step, if you're interested in doing this program, is, is applying at the MTU website. You'll find information on the MTU website about the program and a lot of the questions that we've asked, as well as some other information. Uh, we're on hand to answer your questions, be it ourselves in MTU or our colleagues in a, a Atlantic Flight Training Academy as well to answer your questions. So feel free to reach out and to, to, uh, we'll do our very best to ensure that your questions are answered. What you're aiming to do is a big undertaking. There's, there's no point uh, pretending otherwise. It is something you need to give thought to. Um, but I, I can't um, overestimate enough the, the importance, I guess, of giving this serious consideration because it is something that will make not just the next few years of your life more interesting and colorful 
as you pursue an aviation career, but it gives you opportunities from the get go, as Philip mentioned earlier, in terms of developing a skill set that's really useful in the airline sector, as well as subsequently in giving you career mobility and other opportunities. So that's something that um, I think you, you would regret. Um, for any other questions you have at this stage, you can email me directly at po.fenton at cit.ie or ideally email us at aviation at cit.ie. Again, we're still using our old email addresses just for a short period longer. Uh, but if you email us at aviation at cit.ie with any queries, uh, we are, we're happy to pass those on to Atlantic if they relate to that aspect of things or indeed to answer them ourselves where we can. Uh, but in conclusion, uh, you know, I, I rarely over the course of the last year and a half get to celebrate good news or anything like that. This is a, a good news story because our, ourselves and the Atlantic Flight Training Academy are working to provide people with better opportunities. And uh, this is something which we know if you can find your way to avail of it, uh, will open doors for you and will give you a firmer footing as you embark on your careers. So I'd like to conclude by just thanking uh, Captain Mark Casey, Captain Kyle Johnston, Captain Philip Smythe, Sarah Godfrey, first, uh, Senior First Officer Colin Crowley, Michelle McManus, and my colleagues from the marketing unit here at MTU for your time this evening. And again, we look forward to working with you over the coming weeks and hopefully next year. Thanks, P.O. Great to see everybody. Bye-bye. Thank Thanks you very much, everybody. Bye-bye. Thanks.